YouTube family. It's your boy Chris McLean, Cliff of Cliff World TV. Y'all already know how I'm rocking, man. And today, we're going to take a jump into the story of YTB Fat in his hometown of West Memphis, Arkansas. Yeah, YTB Fat been blazing up the charts lately with songs like Shot Off Gumbo, Get Back and More. And after recently signing to Moneybag Yo, it seems like his rise to the top is ongoing. So kick back. We for the jump into the story of YTB Fat. Drinking you when he took up, cause his dick ass gonna make you burn. Try to push me and miss this to your chest. Watch your face dive in the dirt. YTB Fat was born 1998 in West Memphis, Arkansas. Not to be mistaken with Memphis, Tennessee. In fact, the residents of West Memphis hated when out of town was getting misconstrued. West Memphis, Tennessee used to shade West Memphis, Arkansas but nothing really divides the two but a couple miles in the bridge. Growing up in West Memphis, Arkansas, you'll find that most kids jump off the porch at an early age. The streets of West Memphis would have similarities to both Little Rock, Arkansas and Memphis, Tennessee, with the crime rates being high for the population. One could say the crime rate was higher than most regions in the natural state, and this is due to how close the sister and city of Memphis, Tennessee sits. West Memphis is a very small town with no freeways, no highways, and each side of town is literally divided by one or two streets, Broadway or Missouri. YTB Fat grew up on the west side of West Memphis, Tennessee. And on the west side, just like every west side in every city in the United States of America, you're going to find gang culture and you're going to find small cliques. And on the west of West Memphis, you can find YTB, a.k.a. them foxes up out of Foxwood, and YCB. And even closer to West Memphis than Memphis is to Arkansas is an even smaller town called Marion. YTB Fat will grow up in the midst of all of this. And he, like many others in his age, will end up joining the Gangster Disciples. Call that arguing about a nigga, that's some whole shit. Hey, yeah. Some of YTB Fat's first songs that were gang notice would be Punch 1 and 2, but he wouldn't shoot the visual until he get back into the studio and recorded Punch 3, 4, 5. And soon after, he'd link with local video man J-Day and record the official music video for Punch 3, 4, 5. But he'd also have a song with Lil' Cam called Hoes Wicked. It would pick a situation that happened between his cousins that would do 6,000 views in less than a week. They'll link again with JD and shoot the video and the rest would be history. And that song, two lyrics would stand out the most. One line would state, ain't no hope gonna die for me, Mr. Franklin already did. And the hooks would depict of a picture of a back pocket having a black flag hanging out the back as if that wasn't already obvious enough. YTB Fat would chant, Hey, yeah, bitch, I wanna play with a TV. Fats would get on interview and confess that growing up in West Memphis, he had been in at least 20 shootouts. Exactly. You know what I'm yeah. yeah. I think I'd have been in like, man, I swear to God, I ain't even lying. Like, I probably been in like 20 something shootouts or something. Yeah. Niggas just come through soon, they had, they let him shoot back and shit. Yeah. Fats would be raised by his grandmother and mother. His grandmother, Miss Bobby. But she's well known in West Memphis to the point where everyone calls her Auntie Bobby. Yeah. She well known. Yeah. Yeah, I call her Auntie Bobby as well. Yeah, that's right. This is Auntie Bobby. Auntie yeah. Bobby with butts over there. She sure do. I keep my, I, Auntie, Auntie Bobby keep me in heart over him. She'd also raise her grandbabies up respectful and even raise them in the church. But ultimately, YTV Fat would jump off of the porch. And although he never disrespected his grandma's house, she couldn't keep him out of Foxwood and the Westwood apartments. But she'd be very supportive of him pursuing his rap career. Although the lyrics had a little cussing in them, she was fully supportive of her grandson. His cousin Lil Zay would also lose his life on Avalon Street. It was a peaceful Sunday morning on West Jefferson Avenue in West Memphis. However, people who live near the area say they are far from at ease, knowing the person responsible for killing a man is still on the run. It was sad. It was, it was, sad. It was a sad day. 
West Memphis police say the search continues for the person they say shot and killed. And his brother CB would also fall victim to gun violence as well. Someone would catch him slipping in a blind spot and catch up with him and gunfire would erupt. YTB Fat had aspirations to make it out of West Memphis. And even before the money and the fame, he vows to bring his whole hood with him. He'd actually do more than just rap. He'd do comedy skits in high school, put them on IG, YouTube, and Facebook. He'd also do dance videos too. It was like, no matter what he was going to get himself into, he was trying to make it by any means necessary. In the beginning, YTB Fat was only charging $35 for a feature and $10 if you wanted to shoot the song with the feature. So 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 what's what, what's the feature prices? We ain't gonna we ain't gonna we, we just gonna stay like on the on the level of of just oh, some uh, just beginning type stuff. Yeah, yeah. Let, let's be real. What's nah. what's the feature type numbers? I ain't gonna, I'm just stars. I'm trying about 35, 30 or something like that's, that. That's reasonable. Yep. That's, that's real. Um, that, 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 exactly, yeah. exactly. That's, too much. that's reasonable. You know what I'm saying? Thirty five dollars. <laughs> I'm just gonna be real. If a person can't pay you thirty five dollars of your product, you got good product. I mean, I mean, hey. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill the sun. Exactly. I ain't trying to get the big head. Bro. Exactly. You know, yeah, you gotta, you got. But sometimes you gotta think big, and, and at the same time you gotta be humble at the same yep. time. But you know, like thirty five dollars really a small fee. Yeah. You know, people paying ten dollars for a gram yeah, and. Gram, uh, uh, studio exactly. Yep. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Then you killing it. You know, yep. you you popping right now. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, nine times out of ten, they probably want the video or something like that. Yeah, exactly. With it, come with it. Exactly. Yeah, so, I got to pitch in on that too. Exactly. So, so it shouldn't hurt to pay for a feature or something you, like that. You're right. 35. Five, five years ago, for forty-five dollars, you can get a feature with YTB Fat. That's a long stretch away from the thirty-five thousand dollars that he wants today. He'd also link with another famous West Memphis artist, Mud Baby Rue, who went by Ruger back then and is now famous from his song Gun Class. Told cuts, nigga, who gon' shoot for you? Lost my dog to a wreck, that's why the whip ain't got a roof. Hey, been we outside, this 40 boy stay in my jeans. Only rock with my kind, I know for sure who rock with me. CEO, that, that relationship has since ended. West Memphis may be in the South, but the hospitality can't stop gang wars. He described his upbringing and childhood as a wicked way of living. I mean, look. Growing up in Arkansas isn't easy. Contrary to popular beliefs, Arkansas has a lot of gangs and a lot of gang violence. But Fat would say he's used to taking losses growing up. In the hood, taking losses is just an everyday part of life. YTB Fat had been gambling since he was in the fourth grade. He'd actually pretend to teach other kids how to gamble, but the whole time he was cheating. Miss Bobby would catch wind of this and tear his behind up. When he was 15 years old, he saw the streets for what they really was. After eating a bowl of cereal, his cousin was next to him eating a bowl of cereal and decided to go to his grandmother's house. Before he can get to his grandmother's house, tragic would strike and somebody would murder him in cold blood. He remembers when this incident happened, he was so mad because he literally just picked his cousin's bowl of cereal up and put it in the refrigerator waiting for him to come back. He was so mad at his grandma's house all he can do is start punching the ground. Fast forward a year later at his same grandmother's house, his partner CB would ask him for $10 to hit the weed spot. And CB would head towards the weed spot. And before he'd get there, he'd meet the same demise. He'd see the murder scene of his partner CB, and it'll haunt him to this day. And then there was the incident of his cousin killing his own cousin. Fat would bring the two conflicting cousins to squash their beef again at Grandma Bobby's house. He had stated that the cousins were both known tough guys, and all he wanted to do was get them to sit down and squash it before things escalated. One cousin was bigger than the other and was a known fighter, and the other cousin was a known shooter. YTB Fat would tell both of them to cool off, and then he'd walk into the other room for one second, and gunfire would erupt. He'd run to one of his cousin's aid, and his cousin would unfortunately, ultimately die in his arms. YTB Fat would yet again meet another loss when one of his friends would call him up one day on a cold winter when it was a rare day in West Memphis, Arkansas, and the roads were sleety. YTB Fat didn't really want to risk it and get on the road to go pick him up, but his friend insisted that he wanted to meet Wicked Films. 
Wicked Films is now a famous videographer, but at the time he was up and coming just like Watch It Be Fat. Him and Watch It Be Fat would collab on different projects and they'll even do a few live performances. The friend wanted to meet Wicked Films, but like I stated earlier, Watch It Be Fat really didn't want to drive on the sleet in the snow, and unfortunately, that would be the last time that he would talk to his friend. Watch He Be Fat would gain the attention of Arkansas's golden child, Bankroll Freddy. Bankroll Freddy, just a couple of years prior, had just signed a deal with QC and was already taking off with songs like Rich Off Grass and Drip Like This. YTB Fat had gained a crazy buzz that had everyone's attention, and he stayed locked in with Bankroll Freddy. And the two would even be in talks with putting a deal together between QC and Bankroll Freddy's imprint, Band Clan Mafia. But in the midst of everything happening, Freddy would run into riffs back home. YTB Fat would start gambling with Lil Cuz, a rapper out of Memphis, for about two to three months straight. This would be around the same time that he was up and down on the gambling. Lil Cuz would be playing YTB Fat's album, Who Is Fat, and this would introduce a new flow and a new cadence to the universe that only YTB Fat had. At the time, when everyone sounded like Pooh Shiesty, Fat would stand out with his new flow pattern that was yet raspy, fun, but it was quick and witty. Look cause a player for rap artists and street creator shot off gumbo, Fat Wizzle. Fat Wizzle would tell Look Cuz to call Fats, and the trio would orchestrate a meeting. They'd ask YTB Fat if he had a situation or if he was signed to a label because Fat Wizzle was tight with Joe, and Joe is Moneybag Yo's right hand man. And the group were all in agreement that YTB Fat would be perfect for Bread Gang and offered him a position. And as we all know by now, with Bread Gang, money is not the issue. But YTB Fat would state that he's big on loyalty. So he'll consult with Bankroll Freddy. And Freddy would ultimately give his blessings. At this point, it was up to YTB Fat. Another unfortunate event was strike and YTB Fat had a house burned down. And he needed the money. I mean, he was doing good with the dice, but he was always up and down. And Bankroll Freddy had gotten into a legal situation. Freddie couldn't fully focus on developing his artists due to the situations that was beyond him. Bankroll Freddy was still new in the game himself. Fat would go back to his elementary school ways and gamble as his primary way to pay the bills and provide for himself. Later, he would link up with an Arkansas artist named Clutch Frenchy. After hitting for about 2,000 on the dice, he'd ask Clutch Frenchy what he should do with the money. Clutch Frenchy suggested that YTB Fat had such a brand going on about himself that anything that he touched would be gold. Clutch Frenchy suggested that he sold juices. YTB Fat couldn't believe he just made that suggestion. Like, man, I'm down to my last $2,000 and you suggest I sell juice? Man, point me to the plug. But it turns out Clutch Frenchy was on to something and Man, that was the best decision he could have made at that time. The fat brunch of this fat punch, man. You know what I'm saying? This shit selling like sack lunches, man. You know what I'm saying? The fly away. To Noiville, at $5 a pop in just one week, he made $6,000 off juices. That's a $4,000 profit. He took his last $2,000 and went all in on the juices and made a $4,000 profit. I need all of my rap people and young entrepreneurs to take notes. YTB Fat would recall meeting Moneybag Yo for the first time when he was down and out and about ready to crash. That's just when he got a phone call from Fat with his main man, Joe. And Joe said Moneybag wanted him to fly him to Miami. But you know, coming from where Fat come from, he couldn't even believe it, man. I mean, coming from where he comes from, he was just used to people telling lies to him. Nothing that no one ever told him hell away. But Joe insisted that this time, it was the real deal. A few days later, he had sand between his toes in Miami, and he still couldn't believe it. After all that hustling and gambling, and even selling juices, rapping would be the thing to put him on a one-way jet to Miami and meet the biggest rapper in the South, Moneybag Yo. 
Moneybag Yo would instruct him to open up a bank account. And YTB Fat still wouldn't believe it until them digits hit his bank account. He'd actually done it. From the trenches of West Memphis, Arkansas, to being able to put Foxwood on the map, he'd actually defy and beat the odds and gain the interest of a superstar, Moneybag Yo. He'd do it. He'd sign the deal with Bread Gang. After signing the deal with Bread Gang, he'd go back to his hood and pull out $70,000 and let all of his young foxes hold the bread for the pictures. I mean, hey, the fat fox is a hood hero. But the victory would be short-lasted and he'd tragically lose the life of yet another friend, Otto. Just like the late Biggie Smalls always quoted, the more money, the more problems. And he's starting to understand that considering the fact now that everyone who's ever done anything for him are counting the blessings. YTB Fat would go on to make smash hits like Get Back. This song would garner him nationwide attention and put him on the radar of everybody in the rap game. Sometimes being on the radar comes with his ups and downs. And while up there, he'd run into his first industry riff when Playboy Cardi and Travis Scott would blatantly steal his style of rapping that he's so obviously the creator of. YTB Fat would take to Instagram and air out his frustrations. He would say, Playboy Cardi, you need to start paying homage. Stealing the man flow is just messed up and I'm up and coming. Don't think the fame won't catch on. I got 500 plus messages from everybody saying that you stole my flow. Never heard of you in the day of my life on the rap side. This rap stuff be crazy, but I guess that's how this music go. You boys gonna respect this box, cause I'm dying about it, and I stand on what I say. From the bottom of West Memphis to the top of the charts, Fats will go on to be the poster child for Arkansas. He's already started signing his own artists, and we've even seen him taking his day ones out the hood like Pimp K to P. Bring them on jets and around money bag, yo. It's safe to say, YTB Fats is here to stay. That was the story of the Fat Fox himself, YTB Fat. From Foxwood to Miami, you can just say he's standing on business. Shout out to the Loaf Boys, shout out to Bread Gang. If y'all want to hear any more artists or y'all want me to do another biopic on somebody, jump in the comment section, let me know. It's your boy Crispy Clean Cliff for Cliff World TV. We're going to stay down until we come up together, man. I'm gone. Yeah, I'm pippin' like I'm done one. I'ma stop at the store, sell me an onion. Go and get some backwoods in the back of Funyun. Let a nigga play me sweet and he gon' meet the honey bun. I ain't ride with it unless he got a hundred round drum. Hit that nigga with the drink, he gon' butt up, but I'm bomb.